So I'll just get started and introduce everybody. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Good morning. Good afternoon. Um, thanks for everybody. Thank you to everybody for joining us for today's edition of Present Your Thesis Dissertation Research. We have Logan Tay here from uh, Ethiopia. He's a lecturer in heritage conservation at Ambo University in Ethiopia. He completed his master's in conservation of urban and architectural heritage in 2019 from Addis Ababa University. And his current research focuses on urban planning, conservation, reconstruction, and maintenance of historic sites. His presentation today will show the results of his master's research. And we also have uh, SIPA experts and EPs with us today, Luigi from Italy, uh, Danny's from Brazil, uh, University of, sorry, Penn State University, and Sanchi also from Penn State University, but she's out on the West Coast, so thanks for joining us so early. And Luigi's from Politecnico di Milano. So Elise will introduce everybody uh, after Rogan's presentation, but uh, Rogan, you can go ahead and get started. Okay, thank you very much for having me. And I, I would like to thank SIPA Heritage Emerging Professional for encouraging such type of dissertation. So my title is the revitalization of historic neighborhoods, integrating urban heritage in developing nation and Dip diplomatic center of Africa, which is Addis Ababa. So let me continue to the next slide. The contents are background of the study, a problem statement, objective of the study, a literature review, methodology, contextual review, analysis, conclusion, and recommendation. So chapter one covers the background of the study, but before going into the detail of my thesis, I want to encourage you to visit Ethiopia because it has a number of historic, architectural, and tangible, intangible sites. So it's a unique place. So I recommend you to visit once in your lifetime because we have Yeha, Aksum, Lalivela, Harar, and so on. So uh, in the background of the study, I want to give you a glimpse of Addis Ababa's heritage and historic development of the city. So it is a Katamawa type of settlement, which is a traditional with a social hierarchy than the emerge a form of city. So it is indigenous African capital and it has its own unique architectural and planning style. Even though it has, it is a traditional settlement type, but it has artistically and technologically developed into modern terms. So the location map of uh, Addis Ababa, which is, which is in the Horn of Africa and the Dutch Bay Safar has been chosen because of two reasons, as you see from the map, because of historical and cultural importance and the dynamic of upgrading and renewal practices in the city center of Addis Ababa, which has faced eviction, demolition by the government. So, when we see the notion of urban heritage, as Merlino suggests, it become a necessity across the world. The built environment is a, a physical expression of our collective cultural heritage. So even though urban heritage become a necessity for developed nations, however, conservation of inner city urban heritage has given little or minimum attention be due to this reason. One is develop, development pressure. The second one is they are located in heart of the city or in the CBD of the city. The third one is obsolescence. So when is we Addis Ababa, this is uh, the Jachu Bay Safar, as you, you encounter from the location map. The red one is the demolished one. The blue one is endangered site. Even though some of historical sites preserved by the government, the rest of the site still need integration of heritage into planning skills. 20.38 site of already demolished and 31.39 of the heritage is still endangered. So let me give you an idea or a context of Ethiopian demographic transition. Nowadays, there is like 20% of the population lives in urban areas and the rest of 80% of the population lives 
in a rural area, but this dynamic will be changed triple in 2034, which is 10 years la later. So the development scheme, the urbanization rate, really dynamic, and we need uh, a planning system which integrates such dynamic growth. So when we see Addis Ababa development trend, you see touched roof type of uh, development, which is indigenous, which is Katama type of settlement. So the city is in dynamic rebuilding process. So such dynamic planning need to rethink how we integrate heritage into planning practice, into development scheme. So this is the Jachu Bay Safar, uh, the site which, ha which has architectural and urban values. So such type of her heritage like the Jachu Bay Safar, they have a classical architecture, like a medieval traditional architecture which transform uh, a house or religion affiliated aspects into modern design. So the Jachu Bay Safar is a unique neighborhood. So there are musicians, artists, so many uh, professionals live in, the, in this neighborhood. Uh, so I compare uh, this neighborhood from Montmartre of Paris because it was a place of P Paul Gauguin, Van Gogh, Picasso and so on. So the Jachu Bay Safar is a unique neighborhood. When we come to the problem statement, I want to show you uh, Katama Mokonen's music, which says, demolished it, Wube Berhan, demolished it, Gadam Safar. It raised us without mother and father. So they have a strong attachment to the memory, to genus loss of the place. As you saw in the image, building is brutally uh, demolished from their site. So it's the urban renewal practice really endangers uh, human rights of the people of the Dutch Bay Safar. So let me uh, uh, quote Jane Jacobs. So such a massive urban renewal program destabilized genus loss of the place. As Jane Jacobs suggests in her book, Death and the Life of Certain Neighborhood, depend on the interrelation of stakeholder and an institution within the system. So demolishing historic buildings, streets, nodes, squares, open spaces, and so on, finally distract the diversity of the society. So I decided by going on a fast urban renewal program, and not only city center into peripheries and so on. So there are 40 major new LEDPs which are carried out in 2010 and 11. Then the 2017 LEDP, which is designed in the Joshua Bay neighborhood, also demolished the lower part of the neighborhood. So urban heritage in general has given little emphasis compared to high iconic heritage edifices or buildings, but this building a city is a cultural and a social process. So my synthesis or my hypothesis suggests that why we only conserve individual buildings, why we don't conserve the historical urban landscape based on valita principles of UNESCO. So when we see the general objective of the study is to assess local development plan and assess the historic urban landscape of Addis Ababa. It has three objectives. One is to assess the characteristic of historic environment, how built up areas and physical buildings integrate into form. So chapter two is more about literature review. And I quote Lewis Valva's 2013 article, which suggests current theory define or conservation or urban renewal or heritage in general as managing thoughtful change. The city is like to build Dubai-like type of uh, approach, but this is not working because it's destabilized the genus loss of the place. And major things covered under literature review were revitalizing old culture, cultural values of urban heritage, preserving architectural and urban fabric, valorization of local economy, and so on. And I want to see a comparative analysis between 
Montmartre of Paris and the Dutch Reservoir of Addis Ababa. This neighborhood have some parallel relation concerning, uh, since it's, it's a place of cultural and built up heritage intertwined. As you see, Montmartre become uh, a good vibrant neighborhood due to a, a long, a long, a century long process of modification and understanding of heritage in general. So when we see Montmartre of Paris, it's community of authors, poets, and musicians. Likewise, the Dutch will suffer also a community of authors, poets, and musicians. The Basilica as landmark and St. George also landmark of Addis Ababa. So they have 1958 law of urban renewal. Ethiopia has no urban renewal. They consider cultural approach toward urban development. The Dutch will suffer its physical approach toward urban development, adaptive use of historic buildings, and so on. So when you see chapter three, a methodology, I used uh, research methodology as a phenomenological, a phenomenological process. I use case study as an appropriate way to study contemporary phenomenological process because it's, it interacts with cultural heritage, built up, and many factors. So to analyze this, I used case study by taking the cultural values, the arch architectural values, and the spatial values. Literature review covers, as you see on the image on the right side, articulating theories, contextual re review, international relation, and the method of case analysis is mapping interview observation, data collection, primary and secondary softwares used in this research were Adobe AutoCAD, GIS, and finally recommendation. So research design, research matrix, selection of case study method, source of data, validity, and so on, also put in, in, the, in the research. But I don't want to junk uh, all the files in this presentation. If you need, I, I can share you the, part, the thesis. Chapter four is contextual review. And I want to show Alemayo Galaga's uh, a book, which is called Atbeam. He says, based on a study of several uh, neighborhood in Addis Ababa, he said, the country is a reflection of a village. So the destruction of existing village is the loss of country to die for. So he narrates destruction, diversity with belongingness to the country. So when you see Addis Ababa as contextual review, genesis of Addis Ababa is based on safar formation or neighborhood. The sufferers originally were communities from around the residence, the residence of the leaders, which were scattered on the hilltop around the Gipi. So you can see the image. There are different neighborhoods. The Jachuwe Safar is one neighborhood, Saratanya Safar, and so on. They have a semi-nucleus -nuclear, type of development. Each Safar or neighborhood formed based on uh, the arrangement of cultural fabric. So when we see the master plan, there are around seven ma master plan implemented in Addis Ababa. From fifth to seven, they consider heritage loosely, but uh, you know, such development, such master plan need to better integrate heritage in general. So when I come to chapter five, I also quote Jane Jacob, the district must mangle buildings that vary in age and condition including a good proportion of old ones. So when we see the site, the red one shows the demolished sites, the green one somewhat conserved, and the blue one is still in danger site. So the urban region, renewal of LDB considered 51.77 hectare of land. As you see, the Dutch Basifer is considered so detail of map was done by, by the author. So most of the documentation were, were minimum or are they, they don't have such structured maps. So the analysis and the finding of suggests the rapid urban renewal program has been carried out at human cost of the residences. During the renewal process, private and rental house were demolished. 
privately owned houses which have good quality and resembles authentic architectural feature subjected for demolition. Local re residents which stay more than 50 years, they pay tax accordingly, but their house was demolished. So such type of renewal program is brutal and it's, it's radical in terms of size. So when we see community, as I said before, it is a cultural center. Uh, there is Hagar Fukur Theater near the Jachube Safar, which is the first African uh, theater. So there are humble, humble cultural values associated with the Jachube Safar. So I want to quote now David Fres, the Jachube Safar. He's one of a singer who lived in that community for more than 48 years, and he suggests he was worried about the neighborhood. And in his poetry, he suggests, I'm worried and anxious about the rhino and the genocide of the place. And finally, he, he said, I will goodbye, but the memory of the Jastrobe Safar is still in, in his heart. So he was in the outer place of the, the city, he, but he still lived in that area. When we see, uh, the traces of urban architectural heritage. One thing as researcher done was to trace the urban and architectural heritage of the Jachuwe Safar. As you see, the minor, the, the morphology, it shows the indigenous settlement and the cultural values. So traces of urban architectural heritage mapped, even the demolished buildings, partnering with the city officials, the, the community. I want to uh, include around 27 heritage buildings. So such urban renewal program demolishes in general. So almost 50 buildings were demolished without studied the architectural values, the authenticity and the significance of such buildings. So there are also a stripper and other uh, subcultures which are developed in that city. So as a map, I just uh, I just map all the things that have architectural importance. So when we see traces of urban architectural heritage, for instance, a Ababa restaurant is located in Arada sub city. So it was a center of cultural values. People married each other in that place. So what I did was, this one is one example, I did I studied all uh, the maps, the buildings using a soft photo scan, photometry, and so on for detailed analysis. So when we see traces of urban and architectural heritage of uh, built up spaces, heritage buildings, street types, street hierarchy was studied because in the future, we don't know the future buildings uh, state, so I have to record all the buildings that have architectural value and cultural significance. So when you see the structural plan, I, I remodel the structural plan and study in detail. In general, the structural plan did not consider the, heri the only specific buildings other than specific buildings. It, 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 it was subjected for a renewal. So the general recommendation which I give and studied the structural plan did not consider the Jachube Safar as historical area. However, urban settlement has abundant cultural and built up heritage. The structural plan, the building height and the land use neglect some of its future. So in general, the structural plan or the method we do structure plan in general should consider such type of activities that integrate uh, heritage as a conceptual framework and a, a pillar in urban planning. So when we see the local development plan, the dynamic process rebuilding the city again and again manifested in all parts of the city. So while mapping, the, while the plan commission is remodeling the local development plan of the city, uh, still there is a demolishing of the city. So there is no actual local development plan preparation. So when the local development plan is designed, there is also demolition as well. So such type of uh, like controversial things happen in that area. 
So the local development plan is prepared under the umbrella of structural plan, three local development plan implemented and such type of plan is not implemented due to uh, the demolishing of by government by another government agency. In conclusion, the analysis of the research and findings clearly indicate the quality of physical shape of the Jachuwe safari is important. However, major problem facing the area is use of heritage values and huge scale of new development. Excessive building density, especially in historic central parts of the city of Addis Ababa, is a phenomena that has not given enough attention by heritage professional and government official. As a recommendation, I recommend revitalizing neighborhood community, not only the buildings, respect the character and the human skill tendency of such neighborhood, controlling and redistributing urban development to regional nodes. There are almost new regions, revitalizing dis districts and local economies. Con considering the Jachube as historic urban landscape and adaptive reuse. So I dedicate uh, this presentation for Dave Freer. He was a singer, lost his life in, in the past years, but he was a good friend of mine and a good friend of the Jachube Safar in general. So thank you for my presentation. I will stop here. And if you have questions, comments, I will glad to share from you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Wogan, for your wonderful presentation. Uh, so now I'm going to introduce our SIPA experts, and each of them will have uh, five minutes to provide some comments, feedback, and ask you questions. And then we will give you uh, a couple of minutes to, um, to respond, and then we will continue with further questions. So um, I will, okay, thank you. I'll ask you to stop sharing your screen if you can. Um, stop sharing. And so I'll begin with Luigi Berzetti. Uh, professor Berzetti is an associate professor of modern surveying techniques at uh, the Politecnico di Milano in Italy. He has a bachelor's degree in civil engineering, a master's degree in engineering surveying, and a PhD in geomatics. He has collaborated on several national and international projects in the field of heritage documentation and monitoring, uh, both at national and regional levels. And his research activities are based on uh, photogrammetry from different platforms, including satellite, aerial drone, and terrestrial methods. Uh, laser scanning, both aerial and terrestrial, and computer vision uh, acquisition processing and visualization methods for structural health monitoring and vision metrology, as well as digital recording of historic buildings and sites. And Sanchi Singh Koshal is a civil engineer and PhD candidate at Penn State University. She has a Master of Science in Structural Analysis of Monuments and Historic Constructions, as well as a Master of Science um, in Historic Building Conservation. Her research focuses on dimensionality reduction techniques to identify relevant building features during tornadoes using a multimodal approach. And her work lies at the intersection of data science and disasters, and she's recently participated in a disaster reconnaissance mission that resulted in the publication and presentation of a paper at the SIPA 2023 Symposium. Sanji is also part of our SIPA Emerging Professionals Leadership Team. Uh, Daniele Polino is also a civil engineer and an architectural engineering PhD candidate at Penn State University. She has a Master of Science in Structural Engineering from the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil, and her research focuses on generative design techniques for the adaptive reuse process of 18th and 19th century masonry buildings and lies at the intersection of computational design and historic preservation. Uh, Danny was also a member of the Our World Heritage Information Technology team and is a part of our SEPA Emerging Professional Leaders Leadership team. So thank you all for joining today and providing uh, comments and feedback for Wogan. Uh, so again, I'll just give each of you about five minutes to provide some feedback and ask questions. And we'll go in order of the presentation. So Luigi and then Sanchi and then Danny. Luigi, please go ahead. Okay. So, hi everyone. Um, no, thank you for your presentation. Uh, 
it was uh, to me it was uh, quite clear the the previous uh, development plan and the actions taken in Addis Ababa were we're not considering very much heritage because uh, looking at the subdivision on uh, on the map that you were showing, it was clear that the area was subdivided by district. Uh, I just have, um, um, they are mainly uh, some curiosities and some of them are geomatics curiosities. But the first one is uh, uh, if uh, the findings of your work will be taken into consideration in uh, the, the in the development of a new uh, master plan for the for the uh, for the city so this is the first question um if you'd like to like wogan if you'd like to answer questions as they're asked okay. you're welcome to do that or if you prefer we can leave it till the end and you can address a few questions at yeah. a time. it's okay i cannot address now okay Go mm -hmm. so uh, the as you said the neighborhoods are compartmented and they have their own features so uh, we present our our progress our presentation for the state for the government and they said we can accept such such uh, criticism such evaluation and since there is there are a lot of uh, things and since urban planning in developing a nation is a complex phenomenon we will uh, give them our suggestion and they are said to integrate heritage buildings and there are some changes in the government so i think considering such type of neighborhood engines of the community the community should have the first value though there are some aspects like rebuilding the city as dubai type as a new flower of chinese city so the government official believe in such aspects and we are challenging such type of paradigm because the community value is almost lost so mm -hmm. i think you uh, your question was, I think I answer your question. Did you get your point? Yeah, yes, yes. I, uh, okay. Um, the other question that I have instead, I, I saw like a flow chart at a certain point, uh, and then you were mentioning uh, uh, architectural values, etc. And there was uh, something like a special value. Uh, what do you mean by okay. special value? A spatial value means a spatial means uh, in cadaster in a, there is a, a geomatics there is a spatial means a space related values like built up space physical space building so we would say spatial means spatial values like the space the built up space open space with the greenery something like that so according to jen jacob and other eminent researcher uh, they have the tendency to get, integrate a spatial value with cultural value. When I say spatial value, the street, in general, the historic urban landscape, general historic urban landscape. So uh, I analyze uh, the cultural values, the spatial values that have strong importance for the society. I think uh, you get my point. Okay. Okay. And... Um... When you, this is the last question, when you produce the map in the, in the GIS, because I think that the effective way to present the results of your thesis is to use the instrument to show uh, with images uh, your, your findings, etc. cetera. Um, and you have these multiple values uh, uh, that are kind of heterogeneous, no? Uh, how, yeah, yeah. How, did you decide to represent them in a way that they can be uh, under, visually understood? Okay, that is the, the important point. You know, the values have, should be presented in a way that the community layman people should understand for the future and it can easily grasp it. So, that is the challenge because there are a lot of values the spatial value the architectural value tremendous values associated with the map i think when i, I will send you each map in the details 
and if it's posted on S3 or something like that, you can't clearly show the detailed values. So the values are associated with the building, values associated with communal spaces, values associated with a lot of things. So I want to make the map, but as you said, I accept your comment. The value should be clearly presented for, for other people. And I will work on that in the future. Thank you. I will welcome and thanks for answering. I think the presentation was okay. clear and also the answers to my, my questions. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Luigi. Thank you, Wogan. Uh, Sanchi, if you would like to go next. Hi, Wogan. Um, that was a very interesting presentation. Um, I think it was just interesting to see how the same pattern is repetitive in all countries, like irrespective of where they are. Um, all historic buildings per se or valuable buildings get destroyed majorly, I wouldn't say all countries, a lot of countries uh, and get upgraded to a certain typology or a certain way. So it was just very relatable, I must say. Um, I think I have very general questions, nothing specific, more out of curiosity, uh, similar to what Luigi said. I was, I think one of the things I was curious about was when this urban um, redevelopment was happening, was there any historic body that was involved? Was there somebody saying that these are historic buildings, these should be developed in a certain way versus just like a common plan for the entire area? Okay, thank you. Actually, there are three governing bodies that protect historic site. They may be UNESCO represented site or local urban heritage. These are the Tourism Bureau of Ethiopia and the Cultural Preserving Association and the, pl the Planning Commission. So the thing is, such type of heritage were demolished due to the direct government interference. So when you go, when you go with the peoples of the community, such type of building were demolished and we ask the, the Cultural Preservation Association, it says, we don't know. So there is a gap, a system link between these three type of bodies. That is the major issue. Mm -hmm. So they are not proactive in general. If they, they understand the value of heritage and the society should change its aspiration, values, and respecting its own identity, such type of matters still lack co coherent or systematic link between this type of bodies. Now, another important issue, do we value historic value, historic mm -hmm. heritage in our system, in, in developed nation in general? We assume to, be, to develop a new activities, new development, and the government try to show its workforce. So there is a, mis a mismatch between heritage values and uh, government values and so on. So this value is mismatched in general. And mm -hmm. I think you, I get your, your point. Okay. That that makes sense. Um, I think the other question that I had was one of your conclusions said adaptive reuse. And I was wondering when you were doing the study, was there a, was there a specific idea you had in mind for adaptive reuse of these buildings or how do you think this could have been done? Okay, thank adaptive reuse of is the most important uh, to reconstruct certain building and certain neighborhood. As you, I show you, Addis Ababa restaurant was adaptively reused by Fasil Kyorgis consult. And I was looking in detail such process while interviewing and questioning some officials and the office in general. So there are a lot of adaptive reuse of buildings architecturally to uh, to attract investment and to flourish that, that building in matter of economic matter. But I suggest not only adaptive reuse of single buildings, in general, mm -hmm. the neighborhood should be adaptively reused architecture wise, the community wide, the economy. So as, uh, as a NIJO and as a platform, we are forwarding adaptive reuse of certain building, not only the building, the whole site, such type of activities should be encouraged. And there are a lot of samples that are considered in that city by the government, by NGOs. So, so we use adaptive areas as a matter of fact for rehabilitation of certain neighborhood. Um, I think I was, one, I was uh, wondering, do you have an example of an adaptive use uh, within that area? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, there is 
the first uh, restaurant which is opened for foreigners in Addis in 1948, which is called Addis Ababa restaurant. And I showed you in the map, but I will show you in the figure if you need. Adaptive region of Addis Ababa restaurant was changed. So people use their marriage and other cultural rituals in that place. So specifically Addis Ababa restaurant was used as an example of adaptive reuse from early time till now, from 1950s, 60s, and from its emergence till now, they use such type of activities or adaptive resource in, in many areas. But the question is, who is you think, who is you get the, the, the value after adaptive resource? It should be mm -hmm. inclusive, not only the investment option, there should be engines like local mm -hmm. market, which is called suffer. And there are a lot of building to mention in Addis Ababa, which are used as a, as a, an adaptive risk for future trans, transformation and trans, trans, transition of such historic buildings. Perfect. Okay. Um, I just had one quick last question. I saw you had structural maps and I was wondering what their own, like how would they what were the structural attributes you were looking at while generating them? Was it like building typology? Um, because I think you mentioned uh, the the number of floors or the height of the building versus the area, but yes, did you yeah. also look at materials and like building materials? Yeah, yeah. So the thing, the structural plan considers three things, land use, building height, and infrastructure. But as you said, detailed maps of detailed building uh, like texture, material, roof, each thing will be well not covered because we don't have as such urban renewal practice or historic preserving conditions. So we are pushing to consider historic buildings should be studied, not only the building, the fabric, even the genus loci of that place, what was done in 1960s. So we have to revive something activities because art is a transformative between cultural and built up heritage. And I suggest future uh, researchers to consider such aspects. In detail, I have made adaptive rules of a disabled restaurant and studied such type of material. And as, as you emphasized, such type of should be appreciated in, in all aspects, in all aspects. We only focus maybe on land use, or a street network only on this. So we have to think the whole land, as you said. And I consider that for future, I have to assess the texture, the soil, and so on. These are, I think, important question you mentioned on, on this platform. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, it was a great presentation. OK, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sanchi. And uh, Danny, if you would like to ask questions, provide some feedback now. If you do lose connection, I will be happy to share your questions that you posted in the chat. Thank you. Thank you, Elise. And thank you again for your great presentation. It was really clear. We can follow the steps um, and see how you detail and you stick to the time. It was uh, really impressive because you gave a thank lot you. of information. Um, so thank I have you. mainly two questions. The first one is really similar to Sanchez. Um, because I was curious uh, concerning if you study a specific typology, like um, if you have a specific building type that you investigated uh, conversion of use. So for example, you just mentioned the restaurant, um, but um, I have put it here like a single family to multifamily apartments because that way community could um, benefit from use those buildings as well, or something like uh, residential to commercial. Commercial. So I guess that that was mainly your focus, right? Because you okay. you just said uh, the restaurant. So I was curious yeah. about that. <laughs> Thank you. So when you see at urban level and architectural level, I want to mention some factors. So when you see. Ethiopian cities typology, they have city, city, it seems like the typology have traditional hierarchy. For instance, we have in military science, there is general, there is the uh, lieutenant and so on. Like, likewise, in Ethiopian traditional 
cultural hierarchy there is between the something like like so based on the, at the center the king will put its prominent value than the military and so so in general the typology is, is indigenous and it follows Ethiopian cultural hierarchy system but when when you come to architectural details for instance as you mentioned at the top of our restaurant is a classical example of Ethiopian architecture because it it uses traditional housing compositions traditional architectural elements uh, the opening is the circular pattern because most of the time uh, most of the uh, traditional cities or traditional architecture is cut or imitated from the church so the, it shows a classical medieval architectural Ethiopian style there are a lot of buildings for instance noted, noted uh, printing uh, architectural building there are a lot of buildings they are human scale and they are livable so we need to adapt those things. So the typology actually at urban level and at building level, I think we have to I have to explore those things in, in the coming times because they are important for future generations to analyze for architects and planners in that manner. So they, they have such type of values, I think. Do you get my point, Daniela? Danny, okay. are you still there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I think Danny has frozen. Um, yeah, okay. So I can ask the second question that she shared in the chat. Um, oh, she might be coming back. Hi, Danny. <laughs> Would you like to ask your second yeah. question? Okay. Um, sorry about that. I don't know why today is very you know, stable. So. Oh. Thank you, thank you. And I, I, I could listen on some of your <laughs> explanation later. Okay. I can watch the recording. Yeah. Um, and then the second one was mainly a few, if there is any um, revitalization program from the state yeah. um, itself that kind of like take, yeah. take, takes into account those parameters um, yeah. to a, a specific historic district. Yeah. Thank you, Daniela. This is important question. Mm -hmm. So the state has three type of uh, revitalization program. The first one was renewal program, and the renewal program totally destabilizes certain neighborhood. The second one is upgrading program. So there are some neighborhood like Ledeta and and other places that use uh, re. re upgrading of certain level they consider some historical elements the streets open spaces and so on the third one is redevelopment project so the government tried to push from its era the government used like redevelopment upgrading type of projects but i think you know due to manpower due to awareness due to the government dynamic program rebuilding a city within short period of time so those parameters are really dynamic so it's complex system uh, so the government used a revitalization program into three aspects so there is a government approach so the government uses such approach in general and i think daniel raised important question i think I have got your point. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, and I will probably be glad to see your decision. Uh, if you question us, uh, um, will be. Danny, you cut out. If you can hear us, go ahead and type that in the chat. <laughs> but I think what Danny said was that she she'd be happy to to read your your thesis if you wanted to share with the group. So we can connect everybody. I, I will yeah. share. Yeah, Great. sure. I will share. To look at the okay. Go ahead, Elise. 
Okay, thanks, Michelle. Uh, thank you, Danny, for the comments and the questions, as well as Luigi and Sanchi. Thank you so much for providing feedback. Um, if anyone else has a question about Wogan's presentation, um, please ask. Um, and I think Wogan will be happy to have a discussion. Um, if we don't have any further questions, I think that we can uh, wrap up the event. Um, so thank you, Wogan, so much for sharing your presentation with thank us. Thank you. And thank uh, you. Uh, thank you for your nice feedback and the future progress. I really appreciate your feedback. And in the future, I think we can share ideas with Luigi, Sunny, Elsie, all, all the presenter. I have big respect for you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Logan. So we will be sharing your presentation online um, following this event. Thank you. Okay. So if anybody watching this online, if you're interested in presenting your own, you can uh, go to this website or fill out the form here, the application form to present your own. And this is, I think, the first time that we have the next event lined up. So, um, oh, my image. What, does, oh, there it is. <laughs> Just to say the next one's coming up on August 21st by Renata, who's actually online with us. So uh, go ahead and register there for the next event. And Wogan, thanks again for such a thoughtful and in-depth um, presentation. Thank you. And thanks to all the experts and Elise. And we'll see everybody at the next one. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, bye. <laughs>